Let's talk about the top eight codes that I think that every new apprentice electrician needs to learn about wiring homes. All right, so you're all jazzed up, right? Like you're really excited. You're gonna start wiring homes pretty soon or like you've been an apprentice for a little while and you wanna start learning some of the codes because you wanna be a you know, residential wireman or journeyman and you wanna start kinda being able to take on some responsibility. Here's some codes that I think would be really helpful to know just so when you walk in, somebody can rely on you because you kinda know how things are supposed to be. So number one, we're gonna talk about where receptacles go. So a lot of these things, uh, we're gonna be talking in 210.52, that's specifically the part of code that talks about like where receptacles need to go and where we need them, um, how many go in certain places, stuff like that. In 210.52, it is dwelling unit receptacle outlets. In A, it says in every kitchen, family room, dining room, living room, parlor, library, den, sunroom, bedroom, recreation room, or similar room or area of dwelling units, receptacle outlets shall be in installed according to this. So there's other rooms that they didn't mention that you might not have to do this for, but in these specific rooms, which is pretty much any room that's gonna have a door in it that you're gonna come into and it's a room, you know, like that you can do stuff in, not closets. Those have doors, they're really tiny. This is just talking about rooms where you might plug things in and use equipment. It says spacing receptacles shall be installed such that no point measured horizontally along the floor line of any wall space is more than six feet from a receptacle. The language of that always trips people up. It's like, what do you mean like a floor line? It's they're, what they're talking about is the line along the floor. So imagine this is the floor and there's a line along the floor. Well, you can't go any place along that floor line and put your finger and not be within six feet of a receptacle. Doesn't mean six feet both ways. It just means from one receptacle as you go over, if you get to six feet, you need to be within six feet of another one the other way. So that's where we get the 12 foot rule. One right there, one right there, dead center of them, that's six feet in both directions from a plug. So it does mean from the door, you have to go six feet, no, no more than six feet. You can go less than that, that's fine. But within six feet of a doorway on both sides of any doorway, you need to put your first receptacle. And then after that, every 12 feet, you can do more than that. Just you can't go more than 12 feet. So no more than six feet from a door, no more than 12 everywhere else in that room. So what's really interesting is that this job, we have all glass walls and we have uh, beams in between them, like metal beams. You can't see them because they're wrapped in uh, plywood. But we still have to have receptacles around here because, you know, again, somebody wants to like vacuum or something over here. They have no way of doing that. So we have to cut in floor plugs and we're putting them right next to the columns all the way around. Some of them are used for like specific purposes, but uh, that's something that we have to do to get around this whole thing. And your six feet is always going to start from where the opening of the door is. So six feet that direction. We've got a receptacle over there six feet from the opening, not from the end of the doorway, we've got our first receptacle there. And then we can put in as many as we want. We're within 12 feet. That's probably, uh, that's probably about 10 feet there. Yeah, that's definitely less than 12 feet, but, um, and then we have to come all the way across here and then um, figure out a way to get down the wall. Now, this is not all the way chipped out. Somebody, uh, the, the general contractor had somebody come and do this. Like none of that's deep enough. There's areas in here that are not deep enough. Um, so we'll have to work on that a little bit, but just kind of an interesting thing that you might run into in the field, that things that you have to watch for. Another one that they didn't catch is over here in the master. We've got this kind of a door. This is a slider, so this is a little bit different. So once we slide this open, that's all we have. We have that big window, that big, huge thing. And this is all we've got for an opening. So from right there, six feet over, we need a receptacle. Now, this is an existing pipe or something, like that's not our stuff. But I do have a receptacle over there, but that's like 10 feet away from the door opening. So we would have to put another, uh, chip in another floor plug here and run it over. Next, we're gonna be talking about hallways. So some people are like, well, do we have to put like multiple receptacles down a hallway and, and is it still the whole six foot rule? Remember, all of this is residential not any commercial spaces. So 210.52H says hallways. In dwelling units, hallways of 10 feet or more in length shall have at least one receptacle outlet. 
It doesn't mean one on each side of the hallway, it just means the total length of that 10 feet hallway. If it's a 20 foot hallway, then you have to have more than one receptacle. For every 10 feet, you must have one receptacle. And then you can zigzag across, you can do them all on the same side, doesn't matter. And then underneath that it says, as used in this subsection, the hallway length shall be considered the length along the center line of the hallway without passing through a doorway. So before we were talking about the wall line, you know, no point along a wall line. Now we're talking about the center of the hallway as you walk down it. If you walk through a doorway and you have a 10 foot hallway and then you walk through another doorway, that's two separate hallways. Next, when we're in kitchens, this is one I see violated a lot for some reason. People think that they can just put one receptacle circuit in for all of the GFI countertop receptacles in a dwelling. You can't, it doesn't matter how small the house is, you still have to have two uh, different circuits in kitchens that feed the countertop receptacle. So usually we'll go like, you know, right side, left side of a sink or something like that. And we'll feed everything on that side of the countertop on one circuit and the, everything on this side on the other circuit. Because people are putting all kinds of stuff and blenders and toasters and microwaves, all kinds of things in there. So you can't just give them one circuit. You need to have two. So the code ref on that is 210.52B3. Kitchen receptacle requirements. Receptacles installed in a kitchen to serve countertop surfaces shall be supplied by not fewer than two small appliance branch circuits, either or both of which shall be permitted to supply receptacle outlets in the same kitchen and in other rooms specified in 210.52B1. Additional small appliance branch circuits shall be permitted to supply receptacle outlets in the kitchen and in other rooms. No small appliance branch circuits shall serve more than one kitchen though. So a lot of these big custom homes that we do, you got like a 10,000, you know, square foot custom home, they probably have two kitchens and like a prep area, butler's kitchen, something like that. So, um, and their, their one kitchen might be like megalithic, you know, monolithic, megalithic, huge, large, very big. So, uh, you know, if we're running something to the island and there's appliances in the island, we might put an entire circuit out to that island just so everything that's on that space, that like workspace, has its own dedicated circuit. And we might do like one wall of receptacles and another wall of receptacles and another wall of receptacles. So we might just do separate circuits for everything because there's just so much potential for people to use things if they're cooking for large parties or things like that. So you can do more, you just can't do any less than two circuits in kitchens for the GFCI countertop receptacles. Now on the same topic of GFCI receptacles, let's talk about bathrooms and where GFCI receptacles should go in a bathroom. So we look at 210.52D bathrooms. It says at least one receptacle outlet shall be installed in bathrooms within three feet of the outside edge of each basin. So that means if you got two basins, you you could technically put a receptacle between the two basins, but you gotta think about it. If it's two basins, it's probably two people getting ready and doing stuff. So you might have somebody using a blow dryer over here and somebody using like a curling iron or something like that, all their toothbrushes plugged in, charging their iPhone. So, I mean, really putting one receptacle in between two sinks kind of sucks for the customer. Just not as good of design in my opinion. You could do a quad, at least then you're giving them two different duplex receptacles to plug into. But a lot of times people will do it either in between the two basins or they'll do it just on the outside of the basins or if there's a parallel wall in front of you you can go into that parallel wall and put them in that wall as well so it actually says the receptacle outlet shall be located on a wall or partition that is adjacent to the basin or basin countertop located on the countertop or installed on the side or face of the basin cabinet so it can actually be in the cabinet too if you don't have space if there's weird like cabinetry or anything like that in no case though shall the receptacle be located more than 12 inches below the top of the basin or the basin countertop. So you don't want it to go too low, just be mindful of that. Uh, receptacle outlets assemblies listed for use in countertops shall be permitted to be installed in the countertop as well. So sometimes you'll have boxes that you can get the stonemasons to cut out uh, a square or whatever different shapes that they are and you can sink that entire enclosure into the countertop and then it has like a nice plate on it and you can push the plate and they pop up at you. There's a bunch of different styles of stuff but you are allowed to do that in bathrooms as well. Now, what we need to pay attention to with this whole GFCI thing in bathrooms is that within three feet 
part for the basin. So a lot of times you'll have weird situations in bathrooms where you might have a sink right next to a shower. And so people will put a receptacle right next to a shower and uh, in older code cycles, that was fine. But then you have this problem with somebody trying to come out of their shower and they might come in contact with a receptacle or something and they might get electrocuted while they're standing in water and they're drenched with water. 406.9C specifically says bathtub and shower spaces. This is new code for the 2020 cycle. It says receptacles shall not be installed within a zone measured three feet horizontally and eight feet vertically from the top of the bathtub rim or shower stall threshold. The identified zone is all encompassing and shall include the space directly over the tub or shower stall. There's an exception to this in bathrooms with less than the required zone, the receptacles shall be permitted to be installed opposite the bathtub rim or shower stall threshold on the furthest wall within the room. So uh, just a lot of people don't realize that that was changed because it's not in 210 where it's talking about putting all these receptacles and bathrooms and things like that, and three feet of the basin and, and, and things like that. So just make sure that you, uh, you don't miss out on that code, that there's a three foot by eight foot zone, like a, a no man's land, dead zone, do not cross, do not put receptacles and switches in that zone or you'll, you're gonna start failing inspections. And I know this because I failed inspection for it. So uh, I just missed the, the code update on that. I didn't see that, so. So a good example of this is we've got a shower on this job right here. We've got a vanity right here. So where do we put the uh, a receptacle? Because we can't just put the receptacle on this wall out here. It has to be within 30 inches of the basin or you know, uh, near that sink. Uh, it wouldn't do you any good over there to have to like stretch a cord to like, you know, blow your or blow dry your hair or something like that. So uh, the difficult thing was trying to figure out within here where we're not within reach within that, you know, three foot by eight foot zone floor to ceiling. We've got a receptacle over here on the other side, right at the end of this cabinet, right where the toilet is going to start. So just barely, barely, barely got it in there. Now that we've talked about GFCI stuff a little bit, let's talk about AFCI stuff. So we're going to be in 210.12 or arc faults. So I'm not gonna go through all of the different rules. I've talked about this in other videos, but I'm just going to talk about the places that you do not have to put arc fault protection and then everywhere else you do. <laughs> so in a house, most of your breakers nowadays that you're putting in should be arc fault or combination arc fault breakers um, that can sense both series faults and parallel faults. That's what makes them combination. Not to be mistaken with a dual function breaker, which just senses combination arc faults and ground faults. So it's a GFCI and an AFCI together. That is a dual function breaker. A lot of people confuse that with a combination arc fault thinking that it's combined. So in dwelling units, there's a whole list. It's pretty much the same list that we talked about at the very beginning of this video, um, but you don't have to put arc fault protection in outdoor uh, circuits or in bathrooms or in garages. Now, over time, that's probably gonna change, uh, but you pretty much everywhere else in the house, you have to. Now you can, again, this code is the minimums. So you're absolutely welcome to put arc fault protection on all of those circuits. There's no problem with that. It's just that code doesn't require that as of yet, but everything else needs to be arc fault. If you have a GFCI device in a room that's already arc fault protection protected, you could just think about putting a dual function breaker in because dual function breakers and arc fault breakers are pretty much the same cost. Um, so instead of putting an arc fault, like a $50 arc fault breaker in and then a $20 GFCI device or $15, then you're adding those costs together where if you just got a dual function breaker, that's the same cost as the arc fault breaker. It does both. It protects ground faults and arc faults. And I honestly think with where panels are being designed right now and, and uh, tech, just smarter technology for the electrical systems, I think we're going to start seeing the arc fault dual function uh, thing being put on every single circuit on every breaker. And I don't think it's necessarily going to be code that drives that. Um, it, that might help, but I think that it's probably going to be the technology is going to get smart enough where every breaker can sense every kind of thing. Um, hopefully, at least, I would hope that that's where we're heading. All right, the last one is going to be attic lights and attic receptacles. So a lot of times in attics, people will put air conditioning units. They'll have a furnace up there. They might have like a tankless water heater or a 
tank water heater or uh, all kinds of just dif different equipment that somebody might have to come in and service. So for them to service this, you, it, code actually states that you have to have a light source near that equipment to shine down on the equipment so somebody can see while they're working on something. And a different code actually specifies that you need to have a receptacle in that area as well so that person can come in and plug in anything that they need to to be able to service the equipment. So the first one is the lights. We're gonna be in 210.70. 210.70 says lighting outlets required. 210.70C is for all occupancies. It says for attics and underfloor spaces, utility rooms and basements, uh, at least one lighting outlet containing a switch or controlled by a wall switch or listed wall mounted control device shall be installed where these spaces are used for storage or contain equipment requiring servicing. A point of control shall be at each entry that permits access to the attic. So that's another thing. You got some of these huge houses, they might have like three different ways to get into the same huge attic. So you gotta have something that controls at every single one of them. So maybe like a three way or four way or something like that. Where a lighting outlet is installed for equipment requiring servicing, a lighting outlet shall be installed at or near the equipment. This is another one people miss all the time. They just start throwing lights up in attics, but then this, the homeboy's over here, AC guy, sweating his nuts off at 140 degrees out in the middle of summer, and he can't see. He's like opening up the furnace, taking a panel off, and the light's like 40 feet over there. So make sure you're putting a light right above the equipment that needs to be servicing. It's okay to put multiple lights too. You got a long attic, like put three, four of them. Who cares? I mean, light bulbs are cheap, little like keyless fixtures, or they have, uh, we use these little, um, they used to be called seagulls, but now a lot of people make them, but it's like a surface mount cantrum. It's just a flat thing, little kind of like a slight dome to it. It's LED, it's got little wires coming off of it. They're so easy, they put out a lot of light. They're LED, you're never gonna change bulbs or have your attic lights burn out again, but make sure that you have them in front of the equipment. That's the whole point of this. Now, the other thing is the service plug. So we're gonna be back in uh, dot .63. So 210.63 um, for the receptacle in the attics. This is equipment requiring servicing a 125 volt single phase 15 or 20 amp rated receptacle shall be installed at an accessible location within 25 feet of the equipment uh, as specified in 210.63 A and B. Now this is specifically A is for heating and air conditioning and refrigeration and B is other equipment. So uh, there's this is indoor and outdoor as well. So uh, as before the 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 Lighting was just talking about like attics and, and basements and things like that. 210.63 is talking about any equipment that needs servicing. So you might have like outdoor equipment and same thing. HVAC company might come out to a house and they got like four ACs sitting out in the back on the side of a house and no receptacle anywhere in sight. So they can't plug in any equipment and work on the stuff. So you have to make sure you have a plug within 25 feet of that equipment. So those are your eight codes for residential. I could probably do 730 codes for residential, but that is why you should go to electricianu.com because I have all of that stuff over there. We've got continuing education, exam prep, all kinds of crazy stuff. So if you really wanna dig into this, go sign up for our membership. It's super cheap, it's monthly, but like you get access to all of the courses, whole Discord server. We do weekly uh, instructor-led um, courses on different topics, stuff might be leadership, might be code and all kinds of different things, electrical theory. Um, but if you're looking for like a place to go to be able to dig in more and really learn all of this stuff, go to electricianu.com and sign up for our membership. Love you crazy people. See you in the next one.